All right. Uh, I'm Rich Wang. This is Aziz Baxwala, and we're here from Alimu Informatics. Um, you guys may recognize Aziz from past roundtables. Uh, Aziz was formerly with Meliorex, and over the summer, he took Meliorex and merged it with uh, another company called PSMI Consulting, who may or may not uh, be familiar to this room, and we formed Alimu Informatics. Um, so that's who we are, and today we want to take you through a pharmacogenomic scenario um, and apply CDS hooks and fire to that scenario. So uh, the scenario that we're going to go through is we've got our patient, Conrad Smart, and he's been suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. He's been seeing uh, Dr. Good, and Dr. Good has been trying various treatments for Conrad, and he's now at a point where he's thinking, I want to possibly prescribe azathioprine for Conrad. The problem with, or the challenge here is that azathioprine is kind of a, it's a drug that the FDA actually recommends genetic testing for because if you uh, don't have a specific gene or if you have abnormal variants of a specific gene, it could lead to bone marrow toxicity, which could be very bad for, uh, for Conrad. So in this particular scenario, we, need to, we want to deliver clinical decision support to Dr. Good during the prescribing workflow. And there are four different outcomes that we want to inform him of. Uh, outcome one is uh, the full dose is okay. Conrad has uh, nor normal, normal variants. So it's kind of funny how you say this with genetics. You say abnormal variant or normal variants. But is basically his, the, the, the genes passed down from both his mother and his father, the, the TPMT gene that is, um, are normal. And he can process azathioprine um, just fine. Uh, the next possibility is that um, perhaps only, uh, only one gene from his mother or father was normal and the other one was abnormal, in which case he can only process azathioprine half as well as, as uh, if he were to have two normal genes, in which case the clinical decision support would then suggest uh, stepping down to a half dose. Um, the third possibility is do not prescribe. Connor's genetic tests show that he does not have any normal uh, TPMT genes in which case um, he will uh, experience painful, uh, yeah, painful stuff. I don't want to get too dramatic here, but it's it's not a. It wouldn't be good for, for for Conrad. And then the last scenario is that you know what we actually don't have enough information. Uh, Conrad doesn't have a genetic uh, test on file for TPMT, so we would actually suggest that you uh, get order that test first, get the results, uh, and then and then proceed. So. Delivering this very useful information, um, we, we wanted to use, uh, take advantage of the, the latest and greatest that's out there, and uh, a combination of fire and CDS hooks uh, are what we're going to demo today. And the actual uh, workflow in the back end looks like this. We've got our uh, Alimu Clinical Intelligence Platform, which is all of the blue stuff um, to the right, your right, of the dotted line, and everything external to that is uh, left of the dotted line. And so uh, your uh, Dr. Good is in his EHR, he is uh, in the prescribing workflow, and within the workflow, as soon as he selects the drug and the SIG, that uh, triggers a hook to the CDS hook server, um, and it orchestrates a bunch of activity. First, it talks to the data retrieval service to say, hey, run out there and go grab us the latest genomics data on, on Conrad. And the reason um, why that's typically separate from the EHR is because genomics data is, is newer and is, is not always housed within the EHR. It's often housed in a separate repository. Um, then the data retrieval service will, will pass on that information, whatever data it has, to the PGX rules engine. PGX is just a cool way of um, shortening pharmacogenomics. Uh, and the rules engine will take the data and output uh, the actual um, suggestions or information uh, th that it wants to send back to Dr. Good. And of course, all of this stuff has to be um, run through terminology services because different, uh, as you, we all know with, with interoperability, different sources of data are all going to store data with, in different formats, whether it's SNOMED, ICD-10, CBT, Multum, RxNorm, yada, yada, yada. So we've got our terminology services embedded in our platform uh, to make sure that all of those um, translations are, are done um, appropriately. And so, um, before we get to the demo, let's just take a, a brief uh, stroll down memory lane to high school biology. Um, we've got what, what, what Connor, Conrad is experiencing um, 
or what, what's happening with the patient is on the left side you've got your allele which has an, a, um, a number of genetic sequences of which, in which case the TPMT sequence is, is housed in this particular allele. Uh, the purple one on the top is the genes that were donated by Conrad's mother and the green one on the bottom are the genes that were donated by Conrad's father. So on the left, that's what's called the reference sequence. So somewhere out there in some national library is the, the reference sequence for, what, sequence for what we consider to be normal. And we compare the reference sequence with the actual genetic test that, was, that came back and we find that uh, Conrad's father actually passed him an abnormal variant of the TPMT gene. So that is going to tell us that we need to step down to half a dose for Conrad. Um, and what that looks like in FHIR uh, is this. You've got your FHIR snippet, and we pass along um, this string, which is an HGVS syntax. And HGVS stands for the Human Genomics Variation Society. So there's a whole club of people out there who are documenting this stuff. They're very important, um, and they've come up with this very easy to read string um, of characters that, that tells us exactly what's happening. Um, on the reference sequence, the particular, the TPMT gene has a variant. It's expecting uh, a G, uh, which is guanine. Instead, it's getting a cytosine, and therefore, there's a protein variation, and we should step down to half dose. So, so all of our, all the back end is, pro is out there reaching for this data, processing it, uh, and then delivering the cards back. So, um, we're going to get to the demo. Uh, just a heads up, we, we, don't, we didn't, for this particular presentation, we didn't partner with a specific EHR vendor um, to, to run it. So what we did was we just used our own Sapphire Smart on Fire platform, uh, which Aziz has demoed in the past. It's one of those, it's a drag and drop Smart on Fire app builder where you don't need to, to code anything. You just need to have an imagination and use the widgets that are available to you. Um, and so with that, I'll pass it over to Aziz for the demo. All right. You want to put that on? Uh, sure. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Good. And uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm going to demonstrate this uh, within Sapphire. And uh, we uh, this is our sandbox environment. So we have a number of apps uh, that we've uh, thrown together here. And I'm going to show you the rheumatoid arthritis app. And we'll go through the four scenarios that Rich mentioned earlier in his presentation. Uh, so why don't I start with that? When I click on this, it brings up a list of patients. Again, this is because it's in a it's in a standalone environment, not embedded within this uh, smart on fire container. Uh, we can pick this list of patients in a EHR to just launch directly into the patient. So I'm going to start with Conrad Smart, the patient that uh, Rich has mentioned. And when I click on Conrad, it brings up his summary of his data. And there's a bunch of things, his problem lists and other things where it's, you know where it's the joint inflammation and pain showing up. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to, I want to, you know, the patient's on ibuprofen, that's not working well. We're going to try and prescribe as a thioprene for this patient. So this brings up a prescription demo. And I'm going to try and find as a thioprene. So this is one of those places where, again, we're seeing a terminology service being called up. Pick as a thioprene. And I'm going to pick a SIG, which is the quantity of medication we're going to order frequency. And as you'll see out here is the smart on fire. Um, widget, and that's going to show the clinical decision support. So I'm going to pick that, and as soon as I pick this, you'll start seeing it spinning, and there it comes back and says, this patient is high heterozygous for an inactivating allele of TPMT gene. Reduce the starting dose by 50%. And I'm curious, I say, why is this prescribing it? I have a link here. I can go read up about it, right? So I go here, it brings up a website with the guidelines for TPMT. You only have a few minutes left, so we're not going to read that. Now, you see this other thing, the suggestion card that came back, which says reduce the dose, right? So it said reduce the dose and give me a suggestion card back too. Now, out here, I prescribe 200 milligrams uh, by mouth once a day. Uh, I, when I click on this, it's going to alter the dose. So what it's doing is, as you saw, that it went down to 100 milligrams once a day now from 200 milligrams. So it did reduce the dose by half. So these two, the CDS uh, hooks widget and the medication order widget, they're working with each other, they're collaborating with each other to make this happen. So that was Conrad Smart. Now we're gonna to go to another patient, uh, and that patient's gonna be Polly Murphy. And Polly Murphy has also been on anti-inflammatory drugs, and we need to change her to as a thioprene as well. And I'm gonna start with doing the same thing. I pick as a thioprene. 
go with the high dose again, and you see the CDS hook thing firing, it says, this patient does not even have a genetic test, so why don't we go ahead and order one? And again, I have a link to read up about which test I can order. So that's patient number two. The third scenario that Rich talked about was a patient who has uh, both genes that are abnormal variants, and uh, that patient's all good, who is actually not all good because he has both abnormal variants. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing, and what the recommendation for this patient should be uh, to actually give the patient a different drug. And you see this thing out here, it says use an alternate drug. Right? So this patient's homozygous for inactivating alleles. And so we're going to try and prescribe an alternative drug. Uh, and then quickly to the last patient, and that patient is gene sequence. And uh, do the same thing again. Right, so this is the, the uh, last scenario. In, in, uh, in, uh, this is the last scenario in Rich's presentation. This is the patient who has both normal variants. So it's, uh, so we should be able to go ahead and prescribe this patient the regular dose. And in fact, it says no suggestions found. So, so we can go ahead with the, with, with the prescription. Right, so that was the demonstration of the clinical scenarios. Now I'd like to just show, since uh, uh, Sapphire is a app development toolkit, and I wanted to also show you how, how the CDS hooks can be put together in an app or within any clinical environment. So I'm going to switch from this view to a design view. And it's a, um, when I click on that, I just click on this button. And as you see, the whole design environment for Sapphire is a WYSIWYG environment. So when I clicked on it, much of the screen didn't change, except I got a few more buttons down here, which allow me to edit the app. So I, I, I have a partially built app, and I'm going to complete that now uh, with you. So you see some of the same pages we saw earlier. And uh, you can see it's a WYSIWYG environment. It also brings in the pa patient data within that presentation so that I can actually test the app as I'm building it. So here's the medication order. Uh, and what I want to do here is I'm going to add the CDS hook to this um, to this page. So that brings the CDS hook widget over. I just dragged it over. Now I can configure it. And to configure it, I can add a title. It can be anything I want. I can pick all the CDS hooks parameters. So in this case, I want to pick a uh, server that I'm going to uh, invoke. The hook, which in this case is the medication prescribe hook. And the widget I'm connecting to, which is the prescribed medication widget you see up there, so that these two hooks can uh, these two widgets can now start collaborating with each other. And then the hook itself, the CDS that I'm calling, which is PGX. Right? And I have to do one more thing, which is I need to tell it to listen to certain events occurring here. And so in this case, well, I want the CDS to trigger when the when the uh, clinician picks the SIG that they're going to order. So I, I subscribe to notifications from this widget, and uh, I had already set up the that widget to send out a notification called SIG, so I said that. So whenever the SIG changes, it's going to refresh this widget, and that's it, and I save and I'm done. Uh, so now I can test it. So this is now I'm testing in the design mode, and since this patient has both normal variants, it came back with no suggestions found. Right. Um, so that's it for the demonstration. Thank you very much, and thank you to the HL7 staff. For it. <laughs>